what's up fellow Sambarians so with the recent increase um, in demand for these headers there's been a lot of questions about running running rich running lich running lean I'm dyslexic running rich or running lean and uh, do I need to tune my carb is it going to hurt something? So, I mean, I can't tell you, like, numbers and graphs and all that wise. I can only tell you my experience of me driving around my little KS4 carbureted with the header and the exhaust. So, so far, it's just been checking plugs, making sure nothing's melting, which I made a video on that. Everything looked fine. Um, I have made zero adjustments to my carburetor. I have not touched the rich. I have not touched the lean. Um, the only thing I have done to this carburetor is taken it apart and cleaned it and left everything exactly how it was from the factory with this exhaust. And so far everything's been just fine. So to kind of um, do a little more in-depth um, readouts of information that is visible for us to see if it's running rich or lean besides just looking at the spark plugs I ended up getting myself an AEM the air fuel um, gauge so this is perfect because one I will be able to mild interruption there with the wind so um I can't remember where I was at, but uh, with this gauge, we'll be able to see if it's running rich or lean because it's a wide band, like an O2 sensor. The carbureted sandbars do not have O2 sensors. So if you're running this particular header, there is an O2 bung on it, which is just plugged with a, you know, an Allen cap. So it's perfect. I can utilize that port for something that will give me some kind of readout as to what's happening back here. I'm not too concerned about it, but I feel like I might as well just do this to kind of, one, um, be able to finally use one of the 3D printed gauge pods that uh, Aaron prints and that I sell because they're pretty trick looking. So I'll finally have a reason to install one of these into my truck. And it'll look cool because it's an extra flashy looking gauge up there along with my tachometer and we can kind of just put to rest the fact that if you don't mess with your carburetor and you mess with the exhaust or you know the intake or something we can just get a readout as to what's happening so the only bummer I know I preach so much about how easy it is and how great it is to have the engine in the back <laughs> the cord that they give you to install this wide two, this little oh, wide two, wide band like O2 sensor, um, is literally like just the length to the cab, and I'm no electrical guy, so I'm I'm really dreading having to uh, cut this and then lengthen it. But if it if it is, it is what it is. Um, it's literally like the length of the truck, and I'm not gonna do a whole video on the install because it's gonna take me a while. I want to run it nicely. And I'm going to have to run it up along the bottom of the cab. I mean, the, the bed and then up into the cab. So it'll be interesting how I do it. Um, and I'm just not going to show it because I'll probably get frustrated a few times because I don't like doing electrical stuff. So that is what we're going to do. Install the wideband AEM. God dang wind every time. Um, wideband O2 sensor and gauge so hang tight and i'll get this thing all hooked up and then we'll check it out at the end and see see how she's doing but just so you can see there's the uh wide band o2 sensor the connection it's it's like the length of the truck just about it's going to be really really close it's obviously made for an engine up front a cool gauge so it's all electronic our pod and it's cool because it's got a white face with a silver ring or a black face with the black ring. But this will match my uh, tachometer that's a silver and white. But 
here's our little bung for the O2 sensor, which if it was fuel injected, this goes up here and then I think it, it goes up here. I'll have to look on my van how it runs, but I'll run it the same way. Uh, runs up through here. Actually, I think it runs behind the distributor, then comes out front, and then it runs up with these wires. So I'm going to have to do my best to utilize the length of the cable I'm given and just run all the way up to the front somehow. So I'm going to be crawling underneath this truck looking for little slots, but that look pretty cool. Not a low two sensor back here. So, yeah. Okay, so I'll just give some updates as I go. So, I got my O2, O2 sensor in there. It's wrapping up behind the distributor, and that's kind of how the fuel-injected ones go. And then I have it, you know, cinched to the distributor coil wire here. And then it will come up, you know, run it up, up here in this wire loom. And then I took off these two screws, which then removes like this plastic wire loom cover right here in the engine. So I'll run it in this pocket because it's got enough room to run. And then we're gonna run it down. I'm gonna, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to lengthen it, which is a bummer, but oh well. Just hopefully I've got some electrical crimping skills. Okay, so I took the huge plastic cover off. That's right there. It exposes everything, so that wire loom runs down somewhere over there but then we will meet up again here 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 run along the frame rail and then we're gonna follow it up to the um cab which that'll be fun i'll have to try to find in find where i can pop in through the cab where the main wiring goes um can't remove a whole lot to get in there but hopefully we can push it up in there I had to do it for the fog lights so I might just follow where I did the fog lights but yeah so I'm just running it where the existing loom is yeah so that's uh that's how we're moving right now I want to make it as clean as possible because I don't want it to just be a hack job of an install um, so I'm taking my time but we'll do it right if you're all the back here and you're like, what's this wire? What's this wire doing? Uh, this is if you have a backup beeper in your sandbar. Backup beeper, usually I think mounts like right there. Um, but yeah, that's for your that's for your little backup bleeper. We have the spectators today. You better not poop over here, poitos. Okay, update. Wires all ran. <clears throat> Nicely tucked up, tucked up in there, runs along there. I'm actually kind of proud of this because usually I just do the hack job of electrical stuff because I over it in about 10 seconds. But I ran it behind this cover. I, I'm finished. I got to finish screwing that thing back up there. Uh, so I'm running it on this wire loom, which is, uh, it's nice. Oh, yeah, there, there we can see it. It's still, I'm able to use the existing, um, like the wire holders along the frame. They're not breaking or anything. I'm just unclip them, open up the teeth, and then put it in there. So there, and then I'm going through and electrical taping it to the main so it doesn't flop around. Looks really good. I'm actually, I'm proud of myself. That one, like I said, I'm running them through these clippies because you can push up on them as long as... You know, they aren't broken. The teeth will uh, open up and then there you go. You can slide your wire in there and cinch it up. And I've ran it up. I kept running it because I figure if we follow that loom, it's going to be fine. It's out of the way of everything. Um, I did zip tie it here because I couldn't get the electrical tape up in there. And then I ran it through that loom there. And then what we're going to do is I took the front cover off, or the front like skid plate off. And right there, let's see, let's see if I can focus it. Right there, I think that's where I went in with the uh, fog light 
wires. So I cut a hole in it and then I used black RTV and sealed up the hole like black silicone. So I'm going to cut that back open and then run the wires up into the cab, which basically follows the big wire loom. I think that's it. It's hard to see from here, but <clears throat> yeah, so I'm just going to keep following that. So if you're going to install something that has to be connected to the back of your engine, highly recommend getting it through um, up against this frame rail because it's going to be super protected here. Yeah, I'm stoked on how this is coming out. It is definitely very short. Here's the end. Super bummer. I think that's why I haven't really committed to doing this for a while because I knew it was going to be short because this is made for probably a front engine car. <laughs> so I'll get up in there and then we'll have to cut and splice and make it longer. But yeah, it's going to be nice. And what's cool is the stand bar has that little hook. You can just whoop, pull yourself out. So it's coming along really good. You can't really tell what's going on and I'll show you. What is going on? And then right there, I'll pull the carpet up, I mean the, the mat up. And right there, you can see here this black wire. I think this is one I've already ran. So we will uh, come up through there, run the wire up. And then uh, since I am going to lengthen it, I'm going to put it here so we have the silver and white face and the silver and white face here so it's all kind of uniform or I don't know yet I'm gonna have to think about that I don't know why my camera is not focusing on anything I just licked it there we go yeah I haven't decided yet if I want to put it on this side over here i'll have to think about that but anyways that's how the wiring's going so far so good um can't wait it's gonna be cool Puyito's approve <laughs> all right so i have it ran up through that little uh black little boot down there i just cut a small slit in it and i'll silicone and seal it up again but this is as much as you're going to get if you get that am um, wiring you're gonna get to right there so I'm going to cut it, I'm going to um, splice it, which is going to be a pain in the butt, but that's okay. And then I'll heat shrink it and wrap it, and then that way I can run it all the way up to the top. But that is, that's it, that's all. <laughs> got about six or seven inches out through the cab, uh, if you do it the way I do it. So I figured it'd be easier just to splice it inside the cab just so there's less you know less chances of doing a bad splice and water getting in it and messing it up um it is going to be a little bit of a tight squeeze but that's okay we'll make it work but there you go now i'm just gonna button up the bottom and start working in the cab well i'm still battling the wiring i am like short by like I, I just kind of guessed on the length when I spliced that in <laughs> and I'm like just reaching it but it's gonna probably be way too tight up here so that sucks I gotta lengthen that thing but good news uh it makes it real easy if you're doing wiring in your cab if you remove the steering wheel because there's not a whole lot of room and you're gonna be a contortion artist by the time you're done doing anything in here but I did get a new combination stock switch so these are mostly always faded uh, I put the old one away here's the part number in case you want to try to get one that is only for the trucks without intermittent wipers Li low and high that's it um, they are different the vans and the JAs have INT these ones just have low and high that's it but it's nice to have fresh ink because this one was super faded on the other one i did replace just this stock because you could just buy this piece but this was still faded so it looked really bad so i just replaced the whole thing that's real easy took the steering wheel off it's literally two screws and just a couple plugs and this thing just slides right off the column um, but it will look good with the 
fresh ink and the gauge pod right there. So I'm still still feeding it because I really want to do it right. So I'm running it way up behind there where the other wire loom goes, back behind the fuse block, fuse block, and down here. And like I said, I'm like a little bit too short, so that's a bummer. I'm gonna have to lengthen it again. So still working on it. Still working on it. Here I'll show you real quick. So that was new. I did replace that one because the guy sold that piece, just that piece to me, but that was all faded. So it looks kind of funny with fresh ink and faded ink. But yeah, this thing literally just slides right off with two screws, there ain't nothing to it. And it's kind of funny to see because the new, uh, this little horn, horn connector thing, that thing wears down obviously over time as you steer. <laughs> this one's like a good eighth of an inch shorter than the other one, so they wear down pretty good. <laughs> okay, back to work. We're getting there, my dudes. We're getting there. That's a really, really tight squeeze for all these wires. You literally have to feed them through one at a time. I didn't think about that. Um, this is the first time I've used one of Aaron's gauge pods, but it's not really designed probably to cram six wires. Um, it's for a tack, which is usually just four wires, I think. But anyways, I got it to work. I didn't have to modify it or anything, so that's pretty impressive. I did have to modify the AAM gauge, so I had to cut the studs off the back because it's made for like a gauge mount, and it's got the bracket that you tighten down to something. So that's okay. That way I can push it all the way in there, and it's such a snug fit that um, it's, it's not going anywhere. But man, Aaron's gauge pod that thing's pretty legit i mean i'm not i have a hard time with 3d printed stuff <laughs> in my vehicles no offense to the 3d printer guys but um this actually looks really good and that's why i'm trying to get aaron to build like a gauge pod that works off of this handle here so you got the two screws here so you, you take this handle off and this screws in that's cool, that's gonna be the next thing for sure though, but this is pretty trick. So, um, I got that plugged in, now I'm going to run the power and the ground, and then I'm gonna put everything back together and make sure that it works, and I didn't get any wires twisted up. And then after I make sure that it works, I will wire loom all that and make it look pretty, because right now it just looks like black spaghetti everywhere. All right, moment, moment of truth. Hopefully I got it all wired in right. Make sure that it turns on. Oh, that's good. Poo. <laughs> it's running poo. All right, let's start it up and see uh, what happens. So far, we look okay. I don't know what it's reading. Obviously, it's just air in the exhaust. So it's going to be running super rich. It's going to be running pretty rich in the beginning. It may need to be calibrated, but we'll let it warm up and see if we get some steady numbers. Fluctuating quite a bit. So far we're not running lean, obviously not, because uh, we're cold and got the choke, more fuel than air. So man, that's cool. That's going to be really cool to have. Um, like I said, I've got to look at the instructions, because there's a way to change a screw on the back to calibrate it um, per your system. Um, I'm no idea what it's talking about uh, but we're sitting in the green we're at 13 about an average of 13 whatever that means it's running rich right now so once it gets warmed up then we'll really check to see if it's leaning out uh, when it's at operating temps but that's pretty cool I'm gonna put everything back together 
Um, I got to drop the steering column back down to get the pieces back together. And then I'll squeeze, man, I'll squeeze all these wires through. That's going to be fun. Um, and then we'll set the pod in there and I'll let it kind of warm up and we'll see how the numbers do. So we can uh, get a good idea of what that header is doing to our engine. If it's making it run lean or rich or optimal. So yeah, let me get everything back together so we get a good visual of what it looks like. All right. Oh man. <sighs> here is a, a little fish eye. All right, here we go. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Everything kind of matches. Yellow AM, yellow Momo, yellow shift light cover. That's pretty cool. All right, let's see. So it's obviously going to kind of lean out. But when we're on the throttle, it's normal. So I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say that works. And I'm going to say having that header probably isn't causing much of an issue. Because now we have that gauge. And to be honest, I've always wanted one of these gauges for the longest time. I just never had a car I could put it on because they've all had O2 sensors and I was never able to, you know, weld a bung into my existing exhaust. So I'm pretty stoked just to have this thing in here so I can watch the cool colors and the numbers change. But yeah, I just kind of wanted to do that to put some questions to rest. Is it running super lean? Is it running rich? Is it whatever? It's obviously running optimal when it's under uh, when you're throttling um it's it's in the green even around six grand it's in the green so i think it's okay again i don't know a whole lot about it, these uh air fuel ratio gauges but it just looks pretty cool and i'm gonna say green green is go and red is bad stop so um yeah that was it so that's Aaron's 3D printed gauge pod. That'll hold, obviously, this AM fuel air ratio gauge. Uh, it holds the glow shift tachometer. That's basically what he made it for was the glow shift tachometer. 52 millimeter or two inch. Um, it also will hold like the oil pressure temp, um, water temp gauge from glow shift. This one, the AM, I did have to modify it slightly, cut the studs off the back because um, it pokes, it would have poked out. So not a big deal. Fits super snug in there. I can't even barely move it now that it's in there. So pulling it out is going to be a pain in the butt. But I'm going to finish just tidying up the wires. I'll do a little, um, I'll do a little cable management back there, get it all cleaned up. But um, yeah, I just kind of wanted to make a video on that and show what numbers and all that stuff we're getting and how I ran it. If you want to do something like that, how you could run it through the wire loom, the existing loom and all that stuff. Kind of a pain in the butt, but totally worth it. Took most of the day. I was going slow at it, but not too bad. And it looks really cool. I like it a lot. So. With that said, thank you for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Um, I apologize if my knowledge on this air fuel ratio stuff isn't to par. But again, I just like shiny lights and numbers and stuff. So it looks really cool in here. And I'm going to assume that it's doing okay. So um, if you liked it, please like and subscribe. All that fun stuff. I really appreciate it. It helps me out. And, uh, yeah, if you need parts for your sandbar or your Acti or your Mitsubishi Bravo, I got stuff on my website, okgarage.com. And, yeah, I'm not sure what my next video is going to be on, but uh, I'll, think so, I'll think of something. Um, in the meantime, thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. I will uh, see you all on the next one. Let's see if we can get a good rev with my mic.